And you can do your stuff, have your love sent for your spirit, and they shall be created, and they shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, by the light of your Holy Spirit, in your structure, hearts are faithful. Grant her to the same spirit, mutually wise, and ever rejoice in his consolation through Christ our Lord. <clears throat> Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verse 35 to 42. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw him saw them following and asked, what do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher. 
Where are you staying? Come, he replied, and see, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying. And they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said, followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ, and brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John, you will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, today we reflect on the encounter between Jesus and the, his first disciples. Here is Andrew and John. And as we are told that Andrew and John were, first of all, disciples of John the Baptist. And of course, John was the one that witnessed about Jesus, was the one that showed Jesus to them, as we have heard in this gospel. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, this is the Lamb of God. That was John's mission in the world. He was to point out Jesus. He was to testify, to witness to the Messiah. And just John did that. John did that to his closest disciples. He told them who Jesus was. He showed Jesus to his disciples. He led his closest disciples to the Lord. To a great extent, my brothers and sisters, that's what we are all called to do. And we are to lead others to Jesus, especially the people around us. And we can do that if people trust us. If people trust us, then when we tell them about Jesus, they will listen to us but if people cannot trust us then you discover that the gospel they cannot trust the gospel that we preach and I, if there's anything wrong with the faith in fact there's nothing wrong with the faith but our proclamation of the faith today there's what you call a crisis of confidence you know People don't believe in what we are saying because they don't believe in us. They don't have faith in us. So sometimes if we're not credible people, we discover that you may have something beautiful to say. But people will not hear what you're saying because they see you more than anything else. So it's difficult for them to hear what you are saying. Because what you are, who you are, stands in the way. So that's a very, something for us to, to consider. I know that if we are to witness to Christ, it's not going to be by what we say. There may be so much wisdom in it. It would really be a lifestyle. A lifestyle should speak of Jesus. We should have confidence in us first. When, we, when they believe in us, then it will be easier for them to believe in the good news, to see good in the news, in whatever that we, we want to proclaim to the world. And we even see that in the life of the disciples and Jesus. They ask Jesus, or Jesus asked them, what do you want? I'm sure they were thrown off balance by that question. They didn't know what to tell him. And they said, 
where do you live where do you live maybe it's like saying what we want is not something that we can tell you standing it's not something that we can stand on the road and discuss let us come to your house we want to be with you they really long they really desired the messiah i don't know how the place jesus lived was but we are told that when they spent that day the whole day with jesus they came out of that experience shouting exclaiming we have found the messiah we are not told what jesus told them we don't know what jesus said to them i mean the author of this book has left it to our imagination maybe he wants each and every one of us to have that encounter to hear him by ourselves in our work with him and as we come to his presence daily we are drawing closer and closer to that deep and personal encounter and it's only when we have that deep and personal encounter that other people can be impacted by our lives just like when andrew had an experience he went and brought his brother in fact sometimes you won't even have the zeal to talk to other people about jesus if you have not had that personal encounter so my dear brothers and sisters as we reflect on this text we pray that the good lord will make it possible for us to continue to have deeper a deeper encounter with him to know him more and more daily to love him to seek to love him so that we can also become witnesses witnesses of his love by what we say more than what we say by the life that we live with one another daily may god bless his words in our hearts Touch me one more time, Father. Touch me, touch me one more time, Jesus. Touch me, touch me one more time, Father. Touch me, touch me. Touch me one more time, oh Lord. Oh, we need touch from you, Lord. We need a touch from the master. Touch me one more time, oh Lord. Father, touch me. Touch me, touch me one more time. Jesus, touch me, touch me one more time. Father, touch me, touch me one more time. Need a touch from you, Lord. Touch me one more time. The second day of our novena of to Mary on the World of Knots. Meditation for day two. 
Mary, beloved mother, channel of all grace, I return to you today, my heart, recognizing that I am a sinner and in need of your help. Many times I lose the graces you grant me because of my sins of egoism, pride, rancor, and my lack of generosity and humility. I turn to you today, Mary, from the world not, for you to ask your son, Jesus, to grant me a pure, divested, humble, and trusting heart. I'll live today practicing these virtues and offering you the sign of my love for you. I entrust into your hands this knot. I'd like us to bring to a Mother Mary as we begin this year, a very difficult and challenging situation in our lives. It might be a sinful habit that you want to get rid of. It might be a difficult person that you want to recall, side with. You want things to be better. It might be your spouse, or maybe someone at their place of work. You just want a particular relationship that you want a mother Mary to intercede for a special grace of reconciliation. Might be a health situation. Whatsoever it is, bring it. Let it be that not that you want a mother Mary to undo in your life. I entrust into your hands this knot, which keeps me from reflecting the glory of God. Whatsoever in your life is keeping you from reflecting the glory of God. Bring that knot. Mary and do have not pray for us. The fourth mission. You stood down into darkness. Open my eyes. Let me see. Beauty that man is Refuses to come to the aid of a child in need. Mother whose hands never cease to save their beloved children because they are moved by the divine love and immense mercy that exists in your heart. Cast your compassionate eyes upon us and see the smell of knots that exist in our lives. You know very well how desperate we are, our pain, and how we are bound by these knots. Mary, mother, to whom God entrusted the undoing of knots 
in the life of his children, we entrust into your hands the reborn of our lives. No one, not even the evil one himself, can take it away from your precious gift. In your hands, there is no knot that cannot be undone. Powerful mother, by your grace and intercession power, with your son as a liberator, Jesus, take into your hands today this knot. We beg you to undo it for the glory of God. Once for all, you are our hope. Oh, Our Lady, you are the only consolation God gives us, the fortification of our feeble strength, the enrichment of our destitution, and with Christ the freedom from our chains. Here I plead, keep us, guide us, protect us, O oh, safe refuge. Mary, on the world, not pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.